I think one has to live with hope for all these crimes is that one day they'll be solved because there are families who live at the end of this. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're examining 10 infamous assassinations that still haven't been solved. This is one of the biggest police investigations in the world. It's often compared with the assassination of JFK. For this list, we're looking at notorious slayings in history that haven't been conclusively solved, even if there's been a prime suspect. Which assassinations did we leave out? Let us know below. Kim Jong-nam Before Kim Jong-un took over as supreme leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-nam, his older half-brother, was slated to be the heir. But after falling out of favor, Kim was exiled in 2003. In February 2017, he was at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport in Malaysia when one woman threw liquid at him as another wiped a damp cloth across his face before escaping. If you watch extremely closely, a figure wearing a white top seems to approach him from behind and grab him. The mysterious liquid was a VX nerve agent. Not long after, Kim passed away. The two women responsible, Siti Aisha and Duan Ti Hong, thought that what they were asked to do was a practical joke. The only other suspect, Siti Aisha, was freed last month. But Duan denies being part of a hit squad always saying she believed it was a harmless TV prank. Four North Korean suspects, believed to have organized the attack on Kim Jong-un's behalf, returned to the country shortly after. Charges against Aisha were dropped, but Hung was sentenced to three years and four months. But the real architects behind this ruthless plot may never be brought to justice. Dominic McGlinchey. After being in the provisional IRA and taking part in attacks, Dominic McGlinchey joined the Irish National Liberation Army, and he quickly reached higher and higher positions with his ruthless methods, earning himself the nickname Mad Dog. Having already survived one attempt on his life and losing his wife Mary to an assassination, McGlinchey was with his son as they drove home in February 1994. McGlinchey pulled over and used a public telephone box in Drogheda, Republic of Ireland. Another car pulled over and several men exited. They attacked McGlinchey before fatally shooting him. And I just said to him straight away, my father's been shot dead, my father's been shot dead. So I ran back and, and I found him lying on the, on the ground, the car had gone. Suspects included members of the IRA, the UVF, and Billy King Rat Wright, who was speculated to be responsible for the first attempt on McGlinchey's life. Andres Escobar. At the 1994 FIFA World Cup, disaster struck when Colombian defender Andres Escobar inadvertently scored an own goal against the USA, eventually leading to them losing the match and getting knocked out of the tournament. Para evitar que el jugador que venía proyectando sobre la parte de atrás alcanzara ese balón, desafortunadamente se le, le fue con la punta y, y le cambió la ruta al balón y, y el portero no esperaba que, que, que fuera a suceder eso, ¿no? Days later, Escobar was leaving a nightclub in Medellin, Colombia, when three men approached in a parking lot. After an argument, Escobar was fatally shot several times. Humberto Castro Munoz, a cartel bodyguard, admitted to the crime. In Colombia, thousands of mourners gathered to mourn the loss of the Colombian star. While he was sentenced to 43 years and was suspiciously released after 11, there's speculation that the Gallon brothers, who previously worked with Pablo Escobar, were responsible for the defender's end and bribed the prosecutor's office to focus on Munoz. ¿Qué, qué culpa? Un autogolo puede hacer cualquiera. No tenía, o sea, eso, eso no tiene ningún derecho de que alguien le cobre la vida. O sea, que, que nunca dejará o que haga una marca muy grande en nuestros corazones. Dino Bravo. Born in Italy and raised in Canada, Dino Bravo held numerous wrestling titles across North America as he showed off his impressive strength before retiring in 1992. I guess we're going to have to prove to you that he is the world's strongest man, and I guess everybody out here too. In March 1993, the former wrestler was fatally shot at his home in Laval, Quebec. Bravo was the nephew by marriage of Vincenzo the Egg Catroni, a Montreal crime boss. As such, it's alleged the wrestler was involved in organized crime as his in-ring career was coming to an end. C'était un gars imposant, c'était un gars qui avait une belle personnalité, et je pense que les gens de la mafia italienne euh, ont voulu euh, d'une façon de l'approcher. Moi, je pense que il a peut-être été naïf. On top of working as an enforcer and debt collector, Bravo was believed to help with smuggling as well. According to friend Rick Martel, Bravo was blamed for a dealer being arrested with a large shipment of cocaine, resulting in his demise. The mysterious and brutal circumstances of his death 
leaves Dino's family and friends in a state of shock. Jill Dando. Jill Dando was one of the most high-profile journalists and TV presenters in the UK. After all, she hosted Crime Watch and had previous runs leading several news programs. This is an appeal to the killer himself, to his friends and relatives, and to a London cabbie who couldn't possibly have realized what his passenger had done. But in April 1999, when she returned home to Fulham, England, Dando was fatally shot. The investigation led to the arrest of Barry George, who had a history of offenses against women. He received a life sentence in 2001. However, in 2008, forensic evidence acquitted George of the crime, and he was released. Barry George was arrested a year after Jill Dando's murder. He was convicted on flawed scientific evidence. He always maintained his innocence. The police always believed he was the killer. Speculation on the culprit included a contract issued by someone Dando had highlighted on Crime Watch, revenge for the presenter appealing for aid during the Yugoslav Wars, or an obsessed fan. But they have all been found wanting of concrete evidence. The reality is whoever did this had killed before, was a professional, you know, there's no doubt about that at all. The police initially thought it was professional, then changed their view and went after Lona Barry George, which it clearly wasn't mm. at all. Um, and the person's got away. I mean, they've never Well, they been have caught. got away with it. Giovanni Borgia. The Borgias are one of the most corrupt and vicious families in European history. The group used all sorts of methods to consolidate power, resulting in Patriarch Rodrigo becoming Pope Alexander VI. In June 1497, the second eldest son, Giovanni Borgia, also known as Juan, was leaving a family party in Rome, Italy, and allegedly dismissed his entourage to meet a woman. The next day, Borgia was missing. After a rampant search for the Pope's favorite child, he was found stabbed. Here lies your brother, murdered in cold blood. And you speak as if... Many people. Many people, you say? While the assailant was never found, it's speculated that Borgia's brothers, either Cesare or Joffrey, were responsible. My brother. <laughs> Only God forgives. Other theories include revenge from families of those slain by the Borgia family or by a father of a woman Giovanni was seeing. Iqbal Masi. From the age of four, Iqbal Masi was used as loan collateral by his family to a carpet factory owner in Pakistan. The family sold Iqbal into the rug carpet business for the equivalent of 12 United States dollars. Over the next six years, Masi worked there, chained, and paid little. When he was 10, Masi escaped and went to school, hoping to become a lawyer to fight against bonded labor. His dream was to be like the Abraham Lincoln of his country. He wanted to free all the children and let them have a chance to be a child and go to school. In the meantime, he made public speeches against the act, forcing several factories in the country to close. However, Masi received many threats as a result. In April 1995, Masi was visiting family in Moritke. Sadly, he was fatally shot. The Bonded Labor Liberation Front, who worked with Masi, immediately blamed the Carpet Mafia, a gang that used violence against escapees. However, no one had been sentenced. David Hennessy. After working as the police chief for New Orleans, Louisiana, David Hennessy headed home in October of 1890. However, several assailants appeared and fired at Hennessy, who fought back. Unfortunately, he was fatally injured. When help arrived, Hennessy allegedly used a slur to tell them that those responsible were people from the Mediterranean. After all, Hennessy had arrested Italian criminal Giuseppe Esposito, which launched his career. In the hospital, the police chief passed away. 19 Italian men were arrested for the murder. However, a series of mistrials and acquittals caused the local community to erupt in anger. Horribly, in March 1891, a group stormed the prison and lynched 11 of the detainees. Those that lived had all charges dropped against them for Hennessy's demise. Alexander Litvinenko. Before defecting to the UK, Alexander Litvinenko was an officer in Russia's Federal Security Service. He came under scrutiny when he attempted to speak out about corruption in the organization and was ordered to assassinate Boris Berezovsky, resulting in him facing trials in the country. He fled to the UK in 2000, where he was given political asylum. It's thought he then worked for MI6 and Spanish intelligence as an informer. In November 2006, Litvinenko was at a hotel's bar in London, England and drank green tea from a pot. 
days later, he was admitted to the hospital, where it was discovered he had ingested polonium-210, resulting in fatal radiation poisoning. As word of the poisoning spread, reporters gathered outside the hospital. Very tired. Alex Goldfarb briefed them on Litvinenko's condition. Uh, older than he really is. He's thin. As he watched his friend deteriorating quickly. Immediately, suspicion fell on Russia. In 2016, a UK inquiry announced their belief that Andrei Lugovoy and Dmitry Kovtun were responsible. They also speculated that President Vladimir Putin had possibly ordered Lyftenenko's assassination. The inquiry heard that as he lay on his deathbed, he told them he'd been targeted by the Russian Secret Service on the personal orders of Vladimir Putin. However, nothing has been confirmed. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Olaf Palma. In February 1986, Olaf Palma was in his second reign as Prime Minister of Sweden as he walked home from the cinema with his wife Lisbeth in Stockholm. Sadly, Palma was fatally shot in the back while Lisbeth was wounded by another. A man both loved and hated at home and abroad, Palma was shot and killed on Stockholm's busiest street as he walked with his wife Lisbeth. Palma had been to the cinema with his family without a bodyguard. In 1989, the investigation led to Christer Petersson as the perpetrator, who had served time for manslaughter and he received life imprisonment for slaying Palma. However, months later, he was released after an appeal due to a lack of evidence or motive. This man, Krista Petterson, was convicted in 1989 but cleared the same year. In 2020, officials closed the case and concluded that an eyewitness to Palma's assassination, Stieg Engström, was likely the main suspect, and he had taken his own life in 2000. However, there was no conclusive evidence of Engström's involvement either. We can't open proceedings or interview him, so my decision is to close the investigation as the suspect is deceased. 